right. That's what I'm talking about. D like for press. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I'm D Lake from Preds with the Media Speaks.com. Boo. You better get it right. Get it in your heads. D Lake from Preds. You heard what I said. Don't get it wrong. Check it out. I'm joined today by Sam I B A D G N G. Sam of the Correct Views and also the Van Passing Time, a Samuel. <laughs> Things unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct news. Sammy Claus here. The last of the 12 days of Christmas. So I'm D Lake's again, but this is the last of my 12 days of Christmas. So I'm going to clone this video. D Lake, you're my guest. Doesn't that mean we don't have a host? We're each other's guest and we have no host. Thank That's you for being my guest, D Lake. Thank you. I'm glad, so glad to be here. <laughs> All right, here. before everybody tunes out, what do we got, D Lake? Uh, Sorry, bro, you're the host now. What do we have? There are things that are prudent past today. What do you got, D Lake? All right, well, you know that Princess Leia is in the hospital today. She suffered a heart attack earlier. That is dreadful. Yes, I, she had a heart attack on an airplane, didn't she? Uh, from what I know, actress Carrie Fisher is in intensive care after a cardiac episode on flight from London to Los Angeles. Everyone's favorite, everyone's favorite General Leia, formerly Princess, now a General, General, General Leia in the Star and that's Wars. A uh, that's a shame too. The resurgence in interest and her career was experiencing another great burst. Not that she ever fell out of favor, but I mean, she she was experiencing that second burst that great actors and actresses get. Yeah, we've she seen had, it with uh, Nicholson, for instance. Yeah, she and was having a John Travolta there, right? Yes, it's a shame that that would happen to her. Very, especially now, terrible. I'll tell you what, D. Like it, it, it is that time of year. This here, I don't know if you have one. This here, Carrie Fisher. Princess Leia, for all the years that I have been a fan of yours, for as a as a, as a small child, when I would make uh, Han Solo and Luke Skywalker do dirty things to you on the Millennium Falcon because I thought I knew what sex was at the age of eight. This is for you, Princess Leia. May you recover well. Merry Christmas. Well, I get some Christmas attire on. I, Sam, aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper? Do you like for prayer as the media speaks? Joined by Sam I B Deganji. I'm taking over as host. Uh, Sam, also in uh, this week's news. Kind of sounds like Donald Trump wants to, uh, you know, increase the um, the United States nuclear capabilities. I mean, considering the fact that if you look at our most up-to-date nuclear program, it's on fucking floppy disks. So isn't it time? No. Isn't it time that we fucking renew that shit a little bit? Come on. I, I have floppy. an interest. They're like, launch the code. Hey, you got that floppy disk? Hey, uh, What's sorry, funny? Wait, you don't have anything to plug it into anymore. Oh, shit. And the funniest part, is that really true? The funny part of us, we were just talking the other day about how when keyboardists like myself used to load the sounds and sequences that you were going to use on stage, you would have to come up with things to go between songs because you would have to load your songs on a, a floppy disk because... You know, in 1999 and 2002, nobody that I knew could afford a laptop. So, I mean, you were stuck with these load times on these floppies. And the more intricate the sound was, or the sounds in it, the longer it took to load. So it's funny, because I wonder if there would be a lag time in loading it, and maybe there wouldn't be in, a, in Russia or in China. You know, you wonder, are they still using floppies? Can you find that information? Because I think that would be 
extremely important to know. Yeah, I'm looking for the picture of me with Donald Trump. <laughs> All right, as for his uh, his Trumpkins, uh, let me ask your friends, what do you think? It's not the such that we use it, but like I said, if there's a lag, lag time on a keyboard, we're looking about a launch code system here. So would there be a delay if another country had moved away from floppies? Um, and are you sure that we ha that we are still using those, do you like? Well, speaking of delay, it's so funny that I'm doing a second show today with Sam when earlier I did another show, just me and the girls, Sam. You know what I'm saying? It was uh, myself with Anne Marie and Nikki Darling. Nikki, who always posts the funniest shit on Facebook, right? She's like, cat owners more likely to be into bondage and BDSM than anyone else. Cat owners, Sam. I have like, I guess. I, I, I can't even tell you how many cats I have. I can't keep track anymore. I know there's like seven kittens, but they're all kittens. Well, I so. think it has. Those I think it has something. I think it has something to do with the attraction to pussy uh, cats, and uh, I own two cats myself. And uh, you know, I, I might have a yard or two of garland. <laughs> A couple yards of unused garland that could be used to bring some Christmas cheer in ways that were maybe, uh, you know, different. So perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, what we really need is like a cat sound effect, Sam. And, uh, hello? What I posted um, yesterday was that Obama golfs. Meanwhile, at Donald J. Trump owns the golf course. <laughs> well, while Obama goes golfing, like Trump is the guy that owns all the courses. Yeah, is Obama? See, I don't. I don't, you I know nothing about. I know nothing about golf. Is Obama a good golfer? That's the question. Like, I I, I can't look at his story notes. Reportedly I don't. Mediocre. Reportedly mediocre. Supposedly Biden's even better than he is. I think even Biden's better. Biden's my Biden might be better. Let me hook up my headphones, Sam. I'm afraid we're getting an echo. Yeah, I can do the same. Sam, go Let go for it. Go for it. Go fill in for a minute. But make sure you have friends when you're watching this. These are things that are coming up trending as we're going live today, and it's Christmas Eve. Let us know. What did you do on Christmas Eve? Maybe we'll talk about the most creative story uh, next week on the show. What did you do for Christmas? What did you get for Christmas? What did you hope you had gotten for Christmas? Um, any of those stories, we wait for those every year. So if you have any, do make sure you let us know. Also, hit my channel, uh, youtube.com slash correct view. I just talked about how they're shutting down a charity that, uh, that uh, Donald Trump's son was in. And the reason that that matters so much is that this charity had raised millions of dollars for St. Jude, which is one of the most worthy charities in the world. And did you hear about that DRLI headphone up? Uh, Sam, I just headphoned up. I didn't hear exactly. I heard something about St. Jude. Uh, I've heard of that. I'm not exactly sure where that story was going, so I can't really comment on that. What I can comment yeah. on is uh, India. They, uh, they stopped Donald Trump's son from raising money for St. Jude because they said it was selling access to the presidency. Eric Trump? Who, who was that? Don, Don Jr.? Uh, he, I know Eric Trump is, is yeah, the one that's really into and he, him and his wife. I don't think anything they're doing is Saint bad. St. Jude is wonderful. It, and it was St. Jude? Saint yeah. Jude. Okay, yeah. If... if Leave it to the leave it to the uh, outgoing Obama administration and the left wing Democrat nuts to demonize Saint Jude. What are you retarded? And again, they compared it to the Clinton Foundation. Well, Donald Trump was never found to be. I mean, that was what you mean, trying Saint to Jude raise money like, illegally. Yeah, Saint Jude helps retarded people. So I wasn't saying anything about bad against them. I'm just asking if these other people are. Actually, you know, Saint Jude helps cancer victims mostly. Yeah, well, they have low uh, intelligence quotients, Sam, IQs. You know what I'm saying? They're not yes. very smart over there at that channel. I mean, look, if, if if you want the most newest news, you go to the media speaks. You get yourself some Daily Dial, 
some chana masala, some kadi pakora. You, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. If you like for prayers, Sam I beat Ganji. The media speaks. Uh, it's a Christmas Eve show, and uh, we want to get to the most relevant news. We've we've already expressed our concern for what's going on with actress um, Carrie Fisher, aka Princess Leia, or as you should now refer to her as General Leia. If you're paying attention to the Star Wars uh, movies, um, I had forgotten too that she was a judge. Did you hear? Did you hear this week that uh, in at least three states that we know of—Tennessee, New Hampshire, and Pennsylvania—baby Jesuses were were stolen from nativity scenes? Like people are trying to steal the baby Jesus, and some church lady was like, "Why would they steal the central character, the main character of the nativity scene?" But it was just funny because she's like, the main character, don't you mean Jesus? Like, so baby Jesus was getting uh, stolen from nativity scene, Sam. Did you hear about that? It happens every year. I think, you know, I don't think it's usually done with malicious intent. And I don't care so much as long as it's returned quickly and it's not destroyed. And plus, so many people have done it now. It's not funny. I had the joke before. I do. But it's, it's, it's... yeah, it's so not a real wise what do you mean, idea. Well, what do you mean the joke? Is Will Ferrell to blame for this from the, for the baby Jesus jokes? Or who, who's to blame I've never for heard of it. Sam, do you like life size Jesus or baby Jesus? Like, which Jesus do you pray to? Is it baby Jesus? Uh, or? Well, it's not a matter. It's more of a snapshot for, for, of a certain 45 year old Jesus. It's, it's more of a forty-three-year-old Jesus. It's not really like that. It's more of like a snapshot of the time. So they'll go ahead and put the, nat- the nativity scene out, mm-hmm. and then go ahead from there. And the people have taken it and moved it or whatever. I, there was a really nice one at the Polar Express in Denison. Is baby Jesus circumcised? Up. And did a rabbi suck on his penis? I imagine he was, uh, but not the latter. I highly doubt it. Uh, like, as Steve Grant says in his new song, a uh, Jew can be a Zionist, but a Zionist isn't always a Jew. Um, did you hear the new Steve Grant, by the way? It is absolutely wicked oh, amazing. Oh, man, I love Steve Grant. He's such an awesome fucking MC. And, he, just, uh, he just dropped one like a week ago. PTP, Steve Grant, I'm all about those guys, for sure. Yeah. Really, the new Are they on the drugs? Oh, the drugs turned green. Do you see that Israel is on defense here after landmark United Nations vote? Uh, did you hear did that? You did you hear what just happened with the with the uh, the UN uh, trying to put uh, you know regulations on Israel about where they can have their uh, their uh, plots and stuff like that? What burial plots? They're um, you know, like land and stuff. And uh, Trump tried to say we should veto this stuff, and uh, but Obama was like, for the first time in like twenty something years, he's like, now nah, we're just gonna let it go, and pass through like a a United a United Nations regulation on Israel about where they can have settlements close to Palestine, kind of thing. And, you, and, and again, every time Israel gives up any land at all, we end up as bombed. Um, it's not Israel that's creating all the problems here, even though they are uh, the Zionist side of Israel is a problem. All of Israel is not Zionistic. And you must remember that every time Israel gives up any land, they pay mm-hmm. for it by getting bombed. And you'll see that in the, um, in the way that when they gave up Gaza, they were immediately bombed from Gaza, from land that they used to own. They gave up the land for peace, and what they got was they gave up land to be bombed. Uh, the radical side of Islam is going to keep encroaching. Israel should not give up an inch. Not an inch. It's not the peaceful Muslims that are causing the problems, but the ones that are are making it so that I don't think Israel should give up one centimeter of land. To I, honestly, I honestly don't know, like, a whole lot about Israel. I mean, I know Benjamin Netanyahu, and I know there there's Israel and Palestine. I know some things that some other people have told me. I I know what I see, you know, basically in the news. 
Um, sometimes, you know, they launch bombs and crack down on our reporters and shit gets hectic over there. And uh, the United Nations is trying to step in on, like, where they can settle settlements, developing land, that type of thing. And they're saying it's too close to the Palestinian border and, like, how can you have a two-state solution or peace if you're encroaching and like are you encroaching and it's like the UN's going to come in and tell you if you're encroaching and like uh Donald J Trump at, right after that cuz he was encouraging the United States to veto which is something that's been done over the past like over the long while it was always a veto on that uh, from the US to the UN uh, but this year Obama was like just was like nah and so it went through and, but uh, but Donald J. Trump tweeted out, and do you think this is dangerous during a transition? He tweeted out that uh, after, you know, January 20th, Inauguration Day, then uh, as per the United Nations, after January 20th, things are going to be different. And uh, but, but that's all he says. Is that too cryptic of a thing to say? Or is that fucking pimp-ass shit when you're just like, dude, I'll tell you what, after the 20th, shit's going to be different. But we criticized Obama when he was like, uh, nudging uh, the Russian guy, speaking of the Russians, saying, uh, hey, don't worry, go tell Vladimir Putin that after I get reelected, shit's going to be different. But you know what? Shit wasn't different. You want to know who has a relationship with the Russians and Vladimir Putin? Barack Obama. But guess what? It's an icy, crappy relationship. It didn't go good. It's no good. It's done. It's over. He's on his way out the door. Guess who's coming in? DJT, not Hillary Clinton, because uh, even Putin... But, I, like, dude, I, Putin probably had as much influence as me. I could say what I like, this, that, the other versus the other, but I don't have the fucking. I mean, maybe he does. He's like, hey, you guys, go out here with your computer skills and, and fish Podesta. Podesta but typed his that... email into a fucking fishing link. Anyway, Sam, I went way off topic from the original well, question. I also, th I also think that uh, I'm sure they tried to hack Trump. And Anne Marie had asked before, why did they hack Clinton and Trump? And we talked about the uh, high number of people that tried to hack the new Metallica last week. Well, if that many people tried to hack Metallica, how many people do you think have tried to hack Hillary that are interested in a lot more than what Kirk Hammond's new guitar solo sounds like? Um, this is something that involves security and responsibility with server knowledge. And why didn't Putin hack Trump? Because Trump didn't have his email server in someone's bathroom. There's no great conspiracy here. I'm sure he tried to hack them both. And I guarantee that Obama has tried to hack Putin. And if you don't think it happened, then you're living in a fantasy world. Now, uh, you just wait one second right there. Sam, I beat a Genji. I'm on my way out the door. Barack Hussein Obama. You can call me if you want. Very I'm on, my, I'm on my way out the door. I got, uh, you know, I'm trying to walk into my office and I can't find the uh, a door without the lock on the mother after. There's there's uh, frosty snowman's outside my bitch. What the hell? Donald J. Trump's gonna be the yeah, president? Oh my god! I was just making fun of him like two years ago, Barack Obama. I think one thing that will be very interesting to find out is how they handle the primary problem here with Russia. And that is that we have placed missiles on areas that Ronald Reagan had promised that NATO and the West would never put missiles on. And it will be interesting to see if we take that if they take those missile systems away if what Barack says is true and uh -huh. whether or not and what I say uh, is true. The, whether or not the uh, radical side of Islam will start bombing Russia and bombing over. Um, but I think we need to get out of the... Yeah, I used the red phone. I called him on the on the red phone. <laughs> I told him, cut it out. You cut that out. But I think the Ukraine, we need to get the hell out quit of the Ukraine. We don't, we don't have any Damn. business there. You quit it. Wait a oh, Mr. Hussein. Did you hear about the, uh, the the mother who put the picture of her children? Uh, she she has she's seen hugging her children with their father, talking about how she's going to send them into jihad, and she strapped 
um, mail bombs to them and blew her children up and then posted the picture of them getting ready to go. She posted online and was bragging about how proud she was of her children. I thought that was particularly alarming. Um, it's on InfoWars for sure. Um, I mean, again, it, it's a video right there. That's them. Yep. And you can't even see her. She's the bottom left. Christelle didn't even see her at first. She thought she was a flag because she's stuck in that look at the Grim Reaper burka. That's the pictures right there, friends. Uh, literally. I love you, kids. Bragging Goodbye. I'm going to go blow this. myself up. Never see you again. No, 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 no. No, 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 Dealey. She's talking to the children about how she's going to blow them up, which she does. Oh. Does she blow up? <clears throat> nah, I don't believe so. I'm not sure. Well, she goes to this after they die. Fucking head. Fuck that bitch. She's she, cashed out. Is she, you don't kiss your kids goodbye and then not die and they die. You she, die. She brags about no. She brags no, about no, bleeding no, kids. No, no. If the kids die, she dies. You die. You die. They bitch. gotta fight. Well, how the, it's gonna be very hard to find. Look how she's dressed. She looks like the Grim Reaper. What are you looking for? The ghost of Christmas past? Yeah. How are you gonna I find mean, the head? Be how are you gonna find the headdress? No, we'll figure it out, dude. She's dead. She needs to die. Who's the dad? He's dead too. He's in the. He's the other one in the in the pictures up there. That's with the, 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 the Grim Reaper looking chick in the burka, and then die. the guy with the beard and the gray shirt. Yeah, this guy could die. Fuck out man. of the year. It's Krampus Claus. Yeah, that's particularly. Is this for real? Is this that. real? Is that real? Yes, that's very real. Oh, mere man. later, mere, mere moments later, he hit them with bombs, and unfortunately, dead. they were dead. Why does it just feel like we live in a different world that is just so far removed that, like, it's hard to imagine that? And even when uh, reporters go out in the street to interview about uh, the threat of ISIS versus the threat of Russian hacking, and it's like 90% of people dismiss both of those theories. I mean, I can understand dismissing Russian hacking. But the threat of ISIS, the, but they're, 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 it's all fake news, Sam. Sam, um, I need to grab something real quick. Can you address fake news, Sam? And also, but can you pertain it to our show, what we do here on The Media Speaks, and whether or not what we're doing is some kind of hoax, fake news? We're just covering the news, Sam. Is it real or fake? Go ahead, Sam. The whole question of the fake news thing is something that they had uh, used to demonize those who have done proper research and do have the facts they'll use that story and it's it's a lie used by people that do not do the proper research and do not have the right facts and the way they try to demonize it is they'll take people like me who asked questions about pizzagate for instance and when it looks like uh you know it's questionable as to whether or not it was a site where nefarious things were going on or not when it becomes dispelled, they'll say, oh, look at that, you know, the correct views or Alex Jones or David Lake said that there was definitely something to the pizza scandal and there wasn't. When if you listen to what was said, we said that there was definitely enough here because of the people involved to look into it. That's not saying that something is. It's saying that something could be and should be addressed. And then they use smoke and mirrors like that to make people sound like fake news when they're not. Hmm. Well, I think we keep it pretty real as much as we can here. I mean, uh, I think when we talk about fake news is because we're defining some shit that comes up like in our feeds or in our like, you know, what's going on with us kind of thing where it's like, dude, this seems like a hoax or fake or like, should we trust this? And like, we question it. And then that's pretty much how we address it, don't you think, Sam? Oh, very much so. And I mean, if, if, heard if, about ever, Rand, if ever it comes up like that, right? I don't see. I, I always challenge people that agree with me to tell me why I'm wrong, and they, they never do. They just come up with something stupid. Um, 
And did you hear about Rand Paul? Um, this is from the 23rd, just a few hours Best ago. Rest. Rand Paul. Rand Paul is unhappy about Trump's Bilderberg cabinet. And he said he hasn't seen this many billionaires since I staked out Bilderberg with Alex Jones. And he does, Rand does have a point here. Some of the people that Trump are appointing are people that have been tied to Bilderberg, which is mildly alarming. It says it's Paul mildly inside was, baseball as well. Uh, that he was celebrating Festivus, a reference to, of course, Seinfeld, and with a non-commercial Christmas is celebrated by characters on the 23rd, it's the airing of grievances. And uh, he said... We, we, uh, uh, media, I just, no, I know, I know, I just need to pause you right there and acknowledge how much I love, like, Seinfeld and Festivus and, like, I get the joke. I know thing. almost, I know almost nothing about it, but I, my, my, oh, my thing is complete. I totally is get it. I have no Patreon subscribers. It's more funny than um, me. On the, <laughs> on the media and fake news, Festivus is real media, so don't try to frack it. And Onion is more accurate than the Brian Royans report. I thought that was great. Uh, that, that was like his best tweet. He said, the new administration is looking good. I haven't seen this many billionaires in first place since Bilderberg. That's, that is really interesting to note because, unfortunately, it has been a problem with a few of the people there. Uh, he said he also mocked Governor Rick Perry, who he said has slated to run the Department of Energy, a department Perry previously stated that he wished to abolish. You know what? There's a lot of the set there to what Rand is saying because some of the people that Trump is picking aren't really draining the swamp, and then other people are drastically different. Now, I have heard the explanation for this, and I want to know what you think of it. They're saying that in things like war and the reason you're seeing so many generals, for instance, isn't that he didn't keep his promise. He is saying that. I need people around me that know things about warfare since I'm not a military genius. And some of these people may have been involved in things like Bilderberg or something. But if you don't use their knowledge to figure out what is, then you can't change it to what you want it to be. Right. Now, Sam, <laughs> I posted last night on my Facebook that when Trump first said, drain the swamp, he defined his actions with a five-point plan. There was the uh, term limits on uh, congressional term limits, was like the first thing. Banning the revolving door against lobbyists and putting bans on, you know, like if you work in government, then going to work for some lobby or like you can't just go work for someone who you just lobbied for, kind of thing. And blocking foreign foreign investments, U.S. government officials, basically like putting restrictions on the lobbyists and and these influencers and these wannabe uh, kingmakers that were that actually all turned out to be completely wrong uh, during this past election when Obama, all of his agenda, and the Democrats uh, repeatedly have been repudiated, and I believe that that is very draining. Sam, and do you agree with anything that I'm saying? Yes, I don't like the name Giuliani and Christie and some of the names that you've seen floated around. <clears throat> I don't yeah, see you Giuliani. See that those are some of the names. Did As you see that Giuliani? State. Did you see that Giuliani and Christie are some of the people that are not in the scene right now? Giuliani's still being bantered about for Secretary of State, according to Rand. That Secretary of State is uh, Rex Tillerson, bro. It is official, or it's official because Rand had made it sound like it possibly okay, wasn't. It because I thought it, I thought it was official as well. I thought that was already so said. Rand, that was, Rand is still a senator. Is he one of the people that's going to fight that position? Is he going to filibuster uh, like he did against John Brennan? And do you think that John yeah, Brennan, the head of the CIA, should be out of there? Because I do. Fuck John Brennan. Oh, whoops. I didn't say that, Sam. Quiet. I don't want a drone to land. On, I don't want a drone missile to land on my house tonight talking shit about John Brennan. But go ahead, Sam. That's well, Obama's one-man death squad for anyone that wonders what I'm talking about. Go ahead, Sam. 
I, I'd like to see more people of the Rand, Ron, Justin, Amish kind of side of the party and less of the Paul Ryans and the Chris Twisty Christies of the party involved. Um, Theo is somebody that you can look at either way, and he is a builder burger, and he's in charge of Trump's transition team. But if Trump doesn't involve some people that have knowledge of Bilderberg, then he himself is not going to be able to have kind of events on it either. So I can see what he might be trying to do. I'm just hoping that he's honest. We're going to do another shot for the honesty of uh, the hopeful honesty here of Mr. Donald Trump here on our. Yeah, I mean Peter Thiel. I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure Thiel was coming down the hill. Uh, in oh, Switzerland at the Bilderberg with uh, Eric Schmidt and all the other guys getting gay rub down up on the hill at, at uh, Bilderberg with Eric Schmidt and all those Google guys. And Theo was probably there. PayPal was probably there, I'm sure. And like, well, D, like, you've got, you've got a glass in your hand. So for AE, $3,000. AEY AE, AE, AE was like, there. I just watched War Dogs last night. From 3,000 oh, yeah. miles away. You wait, click it. I have the camera on you, man. Click it. Bink. All right. Bink. Cheerios. Yes. Cheers, cheers. Salud. Because even if Trump's not perfect, God, that drinks because Hillary didn't win. Now, something Amen I asked the that. girls earlier about is uh, Dierte, du Duerte, Dierte, Dierte, however you want to say it, the guy in the Philippines. Joe that nigga's talking mad shit, dude. He's like, these motherfuckers are going to die and fuck these sons of bitches. Get the fuck out of the Philippines. And uh, if the United Nations wants to investigate me for murder because I capped some fucking drug dealer bitches uh, back when I was mayor, then fuck them and I'll burn down the United Nations. I mean, that's not me talking. That's Duerte in the Philippines. And how do you feel about that guy's rhetoric? He's like, don't talk to me like that, you son of a bitch. I'll burn you down. What do you think about that? He wants to kill twenty to thirty thousand, you know, people in this country because they do drugs or sell drugs. Mostly the drug sellers, but what about the tr drug users? And again, well, all that that's to do is it's. Got, and I'll, I'll tell you exactly how that's. What if play what out. if they find that, find out that guy's doing drugs? Every one of these listeners, like remember remember uh, that I said this when you hear this. All the listeners, here's what's going to happen. Two things are going to happen. A whole bunch of low-level people that are selling that have absolutely no influence are going to get locked, and it's going to slow the flow of drugs to the Philip to the Philippines for a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, if they really do a solid sweep. The people at the top that can afford it for protection that were never even in the Philippines, or if they are, they're invisible. Those people will go on and simply hire new people, and the cycle will continue. Because they're not taking out the people on the top, they're taking out the people on the street corner, and those can be replaced as quickly as uh, uh, flies. It doesn't really matter. They're, they're going to just bring more people in right after the ones are arrested, and you end up with what they did in America. You end up with a prison system that's paid to lock people up, and uh, people in the Philippines that you know are smoking a, a quarter of weed will be doing six weeks in jail in a for-profit prison. That's the bottom line goal, is to get paid to lock people up, which is justice upside down. You're talking about here in America or in the Philippines? Because over there, they're just I think that's, what, that's what's going. That's what's going to happen in the Philippines, because they're, 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 they're not going to be taking out the people that are in charge of hiring. For that matter, the people at the top of the drug cartel probably aren't even in the Philippines. They're probably on an island that they may or may not own. And they're probably tied to, in some way, the dark side of the political spectrum of any given country. We all so know does the CIA. The, the KGB. Yeah, it's like uh, does the C does the Philippines have their own internal, like like a CIA or some sort of a covert? I mean, you know. Well, they, they know, weren't know able to stop the poppy problem. I mean, what is the CIA? They weren't able they're that know where like the deepest shittiest shit is going down so that they can tell us well, about let's, it. Let's, let's, pretend, I mean, let's pretend that Afghanistan was going to do this. They weren't able to stop the flow of poppy in and out of that, particularly out of Afghanistan. They weren't Taking able to stop money. it. They're like, how can we monopolize no, this no, shit? No, no, listen, listen. 
They weren't able to take out the people that in charge of the drug business in Afghanistan. All they did was pretty much arrest a bunch of shepherds that were transporting it. It didn't slow anything down. All they did was take it over. New shepherds to transport it. They just hired new shepherds to transport yeah. it. The people shepherds. that are children in the country don't ever face any charges. They're probably not even in the damn country. Yeah. I mean, we'll use the shepherds. We'll use, we'll use all the people that have just been doing this their whole life, but we don't want the Taliban to come in because the Taliban – was trying to crack down on the poppies because of the because that's how you make the opiums and the drugs and the heroines and stuff. And exactly. so the Taliban was actually just from what I know that they were trying to crack down on it. But America came is, in and said we can make uh you know billions of dollars in the drug trade from this poppy seed right here in Afghanistan and they essentially monopolized the poppy fields in Afghanistan. You can go watch Geraldo Rivera walk, walking around with our U S military soldiers guarding the fields of poppies in Afghanistan. Now, uh, now what, the what Taliban he was wanted to that... eradicate the drug and we wanted to fucking sell it to our people. And then we have a whole culture strung out on fucking heroin and opiates. So, I mean, well, what they were, me. I'm not saying you I believe it's important me. to know that what they were claiming was happening there was that we were protecting it in order to make sure that it was not going to be sent anywhere in order to destroy it. Now, I don't believe it, but that is the answer that we were given, is that we weren't protecting the poppy seeds. We're we'll make to sure it doesn't go it. anywhere. We'll make sure that it does it. not go anywhere and we'll destroy it. I don't know how the hell it ended up on over uh, 20 uh, flights out of here on C-130s that can fit tons of drugs. But I don't know how that happened. You know? And and that that's the whole key to fake news, is that you're, you're supposed to be real news if you believe that that actually happened. That America was only yeah, guarding the Yeah, I just watched War Dogs last night. So oh, but, be shipped out. Yeah. but meanwhile, we have a heroin epidemic in the country. It's a coincidence. I watch a movie and talk about what happened in the movie, and the movie is based on a true story. But if I cite the movie, then I just sound like a delusional, watch too many movies type of person, and you know nothing I say you know is rational because I just watch too many movies. Well, I mean, I mean, a lot of times the movies are based on fact, not the other. Yeah, that's what I'm not. saying. This is like based on a true story. That movie, I watched War Dogs yesterday. I thought it was really good, actually. I haven't, I haven't seen War Dogs. Miles I, I, as as <laughs> soon as we log off here, as a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to watch the stalls of Barchester. For those of you that are like, yeah. know who gave you, what's that? It's another st uh, many people do not know that Charles Dickens, as we go into the entertainment section, I guess here, many people do not realize that Charles Dickens, his his great memorable story was, of course, The Christmas Carol, which most people know as Scrooge. But people don't realize that he wrote a number of other ghost stories around Christmas. And to only know The Christmas Carol is like uh, finding Stephen King and only reading The Shining. You're, you're missing the other things that he has written. So I, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. very much interested in seeing if the stall, stalls of Barchester are... Um, from what I gather, it's about these, this mystery surrounding a, tr a trunk with a, uh, pa a priest that had died and then warned not to open it. So I, I will be letting you know next week if it was any good. What are you going to watch this Christmas Eve, d like Or are you going to be visited by three spirits? Oh, d like wait, I got a question for oh, you. Uh, How I many was spirits? Up, uh, I was looking up what you were talking about, and I'm just like, my key keyboard just went on a... Look at this. The stalls of Barchester. But let me ask you, d like how many okay. spirits was Ebenezer Scrooge visited by? Three. Four. Everybody forgets Marley. Wait, ah, the, the ah. The past, the present, the future, and what? The guide? Jacob Marley is a spirit as well. What was his spirit? Remember? Jacob Marley's the one who was his business partner that warns him that the three spirits are coming, remember? 
the guy with the chains. Okay. Jacob Marley. He always talks like I was the most alarming thing about I him. I thought he was just regular. It, I thought he was a regular it, guy. It, he was a, he was a spirit. I thought he was a regular guy. He's not a regular guy. He walks through a door and he appears on a door knocker. He's carrying chains that weigh hundreds of pounds. No, the most alarming thing about Marley isn't even just the chains. It's that he has one of those things around his head that you tie around your head, especially back in the old days when you had a toothache to put pressure on it. So it's like, does he have a toothache for all of eternity? That would freaking suck. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's stalls, S-T-A-L-L-S, not stales. But yeah, yeah Marley, in fact, was. was not a good one. There, there is a ghost. Marley, see, he told you, Marley was a ghost. And okay. uh, Christelle so, and I saw so a version many, where it was actually so, visited by five. So, there was one version where they tell five. him that Marley's coming. That and There's only one version, and it's the version, it's the musical version that has uh, it's the musical version of Scrooge. There's actually a uh, spirit that warns that Marley is coming, who warns that the other three are coming, which seems to me a bit like spirit overkill. The future, and they introduced his death. Like it just molded into death. Yeah, one of them you don't get to see the ghost of. I don't think you don't get to see the ghost of Christmas future. There's a bunch of different versions of it. It's really interesting. Yeah, if you haven't read yeah. the story, you should like because it's, it's a lesson. It's a lesson in perfect writing, just absolutely perfect writing. Right. Well, be like, do you think we did good this Christmas Eve? What are you gonna watch before we log off for the day? What are you gonna watch on Christmas Eve? I got it right here. Just friended it earlier. I'm gonna watch Debbie Kubu. does Alice. No, Kubu. That's cute. Kubu. Kubu. Ah, uh, K U B U. Kubu and the two strings. Stanley Kubu. No. K U B O. No, not Kubrick, but Kubo. <laughs> Kub Kubo and the two strings. Sam, it's an What's animated. It's an animated, but it's not. Oh. It, it's computer, but it's not computer animated. It's uh, it's like, it is, but it isn't because it's like new age stop motion. Oh, very like, nice. I love it's like stop motion, but sort of like, you know, maybe a little. Computer That's what Colin looked the best. Sped up kind of thing, but uh, new new age stop motion. It looks pretty dope from what I've seen in the trailers, and so I want to see it, and I'm going to watch that. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm probably going to get some Chinese food for Christmas, like a Jew. I'm probably not, going to I'm not join. Jewish, but I learned it from the Jews because apparently we got some, that's, their, that's their big thing. On Christmas, we go we get got, some <laughs> Chinese food. Go ahead, sir. That's awesome. Every Christmas. We have uh, we have uh, Christelle who forgot to buy the last of the needed food for the Christmas dinner. We did have a Christmas party yesterday that we didn't use all the turkey for, so we're probably going to kill it. But she's waited till like 8.29 to realize that we don't have everything we need for Christmas dinner. So I'm not really sure what I'm eating tomorrow for Christmas dinner. This could be like... You know, if you're trying to say you got to go to the store, to, if you're trying to say you got to go to the store to get some stuff, I do too. Oh, it's, so. it's too late. You could talk no. all like, dude, like I don't think uh -huh. we're going to have any options. You're in California. I'm in the land of the... Uh, yeah. It's not going to happen. So it's like 8.30 there? On it's Christmas bad. Eve? Yeah, it's 8.30. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, everyone's fine. Sheesh. That's what I'm so saying. So we're gonna I have bet. a horrible uh, dinner tomorrow, probably. <laughs> no, you can go to the 24-hour places. 24-hour yeah, places. There is no 24-hour places. Walmart, even even Wally World is letting me down. I've never seen anything what? like this. This is like a food desert. Kyle Phillips used to talk about a food desert. That's where I lived. I live in a freaking. You don't have a 7-Eleven on that. I'm I'm going. That's where I'm going. All right. Well, you can't get a Christmas dinner on a lot. Yeah. No, I can't get a Christmas dinner there. I should have thought of that earlier. Um, but I am going to do, uh, get dinner tomorrow for Christmas, but, uh, tonight, uh, well, I got, uh, well, I did, I was smart. I got, uh, I had Hawaiian uh, meatballs today. I got like a big thing I earlier, Hawaiian so I'm going to eat the second half later. Yeah. Got a sandwich, big sandwich. But, uh, well, so friends, thank you for, for watching us Christmas Eve.
tomorrow is Christmas. I mean, we normally do the show on Sundays, but tomorrow's Christmas. We're all going to be doing our Christmas thing. So we thought we really wanted to be on our channel tonight, uh, earlier today. And we may end up actually doing it. We may end up actually doing it tomorrow because D-Lake and I could both, who knows? Who knows? Well, you give me a call early and see where I'm at. Well, you know, I don't know. You know, I might stay up late tonight. Too well, dude, we're going to do another drink. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of the ancient age. I'm ah, only doing man. a single, though. And I want to get half serious for a second. Here's what I'm going to do, friends. I'm raising this glass for you who's still watching. Thank you for tuning in to us. You guys got to know some favor. Look over the videos and think about the hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of hours that have been yeah, put on me. I'm from trying to people do who have done this. Nothing. This Remember weekend. us, friends, and thank you for watching. Remember to hit share. Remember to hit subscribe. Because when you do that, it makes us want to keep doing it. If uh, D Lake and I have probably lost hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars a year doing this show. Yeah, I mean, and you know, I get people it. offering me money all the time, and I'm like, no, dude, I got to do the show, with Sam. Go ahead, Sam. I I have had my electric shut off since July. I've had my water shut off. Uh, we we're out here doing the work that most people can't do, and we're making far less that are worth far less. So, uh, friends, thank you well, for tuning now. in. Yeah. Do you like and I toast to your health? Lift it. And not like. only Christmas, we toast to the new year where Sam and I just like really make everything happen. It all comes together where it's like, yo, yo, yo. Like, you know, the bells are ringing. And uh, we put it together. I mean, hey, do you guys like, like, to these new uh, news shows, I mean, like, because ours is the best one. I mean, if you look at all of them combined, I mean, ours is ten times better than the best one that you find. So, I mean, it's like whatever every time we do a sh do a show. And I know that's your new uh, – the word that you hate, hate the most in America is whatever, but it really is like whatever because that's how we do it. And if you don't get it in your head, then you're just stupid, okay? And I hate to be the one to call you that, but that's how it is. So – I'm glad that we're putting it together for the Media Speaks because we are fucking amazing. And we do it on Christmas Eve. And we do it on uh, coming up for the New Year's. Now, Let Sam, me ask you, do you like, is, is Schlimba out here today? Wait, I got to put together one more. From... I got to put something together what real did quick, you... Sam. No, you tell all me. All right, let me ask you why do you like putting our clothes together? Uh, all, all, all of the people that everybody else is so gung-ho about, what Rush Limbaugh give you on Christmas Eve? No, no, nope. Well, how about Savage? Nope. No, absolutely not. The only people that brought you anything live on Christmas Eve are the Correct Views, the Drudge Report, the Media Speaks, and uh, Alex Jones. So, friends, that's why we're out here. That's why we do what it is that we do. And we look at the news, we analyze the news, and then we give it to you. So if you want to help us, I'm sure there's ways you can help d -Lake. You can certainly help me by donating at the correct views at hotmail.com. PayPal, I mean, I don't know, give us a dollar, give us ten dollars. Uh, we put it towards what we do. Did you read about all these stories today? Did you know that Rand Paul is worried about the Bilderberg influence within the Trump administration? Or is that something that only we took the time to research for you on Christmas Eve? If so... Remember us. D Lake, what do you got to close us out with? It's the David Lake All right, beer. Hold up. Okay, it's not. Hold up. I just got back in. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. I can give you some fall some winter poetry if you'd like, while you wait. When the weather was hot and sticky. That was no time for Duncan Dickey. But now that the frost is on the pumpkin, now's the time for Dickey Duncan. How was it, do you like? <laughs> it was awesome, Sam, as it always is with you, because you are the best, my friend. And I just want to say Merry Christmas to Sam, my B, the Genji. This is how we do it on the media speaks. I'm be like impressed. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve. I got more tricks up my sleeve. And uh, Happy New Year.
Everyone with cheers, cheer. Yeah. Good night, friends. God bless. Thank you for listening once again. Where others have failed, we pull off a win. And if you don't know, then it's not a sin. Just lift up a glass and pour juice on your chin.